Burma have been denying Rohingya and deny the Rohingya citizenship in 1982. 1994, they take the uh, citizenship cards, from, uh, they confiscated the citizenship card. People of Rohingya, they don't have a phone. They don't have phone to communicate because if they found with phone, they will jail them for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. There is no law for Rohingya. And we don't have media. Media not in Burma. We Rohingya are being killed since 1942. 120,000 Rohingya were killed. Even in 1978, there was a Nagamin operation which killed like almost 250,000 Rohingya fled away. So in 2012 again, then in 2014 again, they do massacre on Rohingya. This is the issue, not only the issue of Rohingya, I do believe this is the issue of humanity, this is the issue of every race, this is the issue of all the women as well and the men. This is not only the security of Rohingya, this is the security of humans who are living in this world. If today we are silent, Tomorrow, another race when they face it, the other race will silent too. And one more thing I want to say. We Rohingya, if you study back about the history of Rohingya, if you see uh, in 2012, 2013, 2014 or 90 else, they are peace. They act on peace. We talk in peace. But now I can feel that we Rohingya are depressed until we cannot speak freely. We don't have freedom of speech. Women are being killed. Why? What is the reason they are killing the woman? Because the woman born the child. They want to finish our population. In 2005, they stopped our married couples to born more than two childs. And those who were not married, they stopped them. And some of them yeah, didn't get married. That's why it's called genocide. They want to kill the Rohingya because of their race, either because of their religion, either anything. But this is genocide. So they stopped the world from helping them as well. So it is a movement of domination, I think. That's why I request to the world to please consider, to please think about the future, to think about the other race. If you think about the other race, if you think about your race, if you think about your wife, if you think about your daughter, you have to think about another, because if another remain vulnerable, tomorrow we can be vulnerable too. I believe if you fight with the human traffickers, of course we have to fight with them. They are human traffickers. But on top of them, we have to first of all, we have to see who doing the operation. Those who do operation, those who killing the people, those who making genocide, those who act on hate speech, please act on, act on them as well. If yeah. you throw, turn back the boat, it's okay. Please turn back the boat of Rohingya into Myanmar. But please follow them as well. Yeah. Please guide them in Myanmar. And if you're sending the money, through Burmese government, please see where is the money is going. It's not going to the Rohingya community. So people are dying in famine. Please help Rohingya. If you turn back the boat, follow them together and see what happening there and guide them. Thank you very much. I'm not talking about traffickers and our argument is not with the people smugglers. Without the people smugglers, the asylum seekers would not get to Australia. The, the people smugglers are not the people who turn the boats around. They're not the people who put their lives in danger in Burma. That's why we do say the boats are welcome and the start of any humanitarian policy about refugees and asylum seekers has to start with welcoming the boats. It has to start with decriminalising people smuggling. It has to start with making sure that people who need to get on a boat and come to Australia can get on a boat and can get here safely. The myth, the lie, that somehow or other stopping boats or turning about boats is about saving lives is a complete lie and nothing could demonstrate that more clearly than the idea of turning Rohingya people back to Burma to face their persecutors in Burma.